and all stereotypes have been affirmed. The Bad Guys is bringing a story to the screen that's never been seen quite like this. We're covering the animation, the actors, the music, the dancing, and everything else that made the bad guys so uniquely different. Hop in. Not letting me in. Try rebooting. Oh my gosh, you fixed it. Number one, lights, animation, action. Oh. It's a blend of silliness and sophistication, of cool and stupid. The animation style of this movie is something fresh for sure feels kind of like an Ocean's Eleven for young people. Given it's like the first heist movie for children, it's borrowing a lot from Tarantino. Because it never had been done before in animation. The opening sequence is an obvious nod to Pulp Fiction and was one continuous shot. Let's do this. <laughs> Number two, Tarantino meets Miyazaki. The animated stories they took inspiration from were anime including that of Hayao Miyazaki and Cowboy Bebop. I wanted to make it my own a French sense of design, influenced by a lot of the anime style. The idea was to mix and blend mediums to try and break the mold. When I saw my character for the first time, I was like, she's cute, I'm adorable. Number three, where can you find a better source of inspiration than the book? It really was that first cover of that first book. The animation style of the book alone is so unique. One thing that made the animation stand out was going back to some traditional technique and layering those 2D elements on top of the 3D image. They aimed for a more illustrative style by keeping the brush strokes visible. This film was really about trying to remove the details that we would normally work really hard to add. Oh, and something that changed a bit from book to film is in the book, Miss Tarantula is Mr. Legs. Number four. Choreographing animated anthropomorphic animals sounds easy as pie. Susan Meisner was the choreographer on The Bad Guys. Her goal with the choreography was to try to start with the story first. She leaned into the competitive and playful nature between Mr. Wolf and Diane. Because I kept thinking, a fox and a wolf, what can they do? Not only a fox and wolf, but larger than life animated creatures. And so she was pushing the actors to their limits. She's worked with Sam in the past, so she knew how he worked already. Number five, what playlists are you adding this song to? The song, Good Tonight, sung by one Mr. Piranha, AKA Anthony Ramos, wasn't even in the movie until the last second they could squeeze it in. And it was starting to look, it was starting to look like insane. It would have been a shame to not include Anthony's singing voice. Yeah, I cut the record and I made it in the movie. Number six, the score is anything but settled. The director didn't want your classical score, but a mix of jazz, funk, and rock. The sound is meant to harken back to the classic heist movies of the 60s and 70s, but it also has its own different feel. So they had a lot of fun with the music and were able to get really big. They wanted to craft a score that supports different themes and storylines. The song Meet the Bad Guys is a personal favorite of the composer because he had to not only score a car chase, but each new character as well, since they introduced each one individually in the middle of the heist. And it made for quite the challenge. Number seven, sometimes the first timers are uncorrupted by the status quo. If you put a Frenchman at the lead, you're going to get something magnifique. This was Pierre Parafel's directing debut when it came to feature films. The reason he took on The Bad Guys is because he had a fully realized vision for it. Despite his background in animation, he only animated one little thing for the movie. You can see it at the end when there are three little birds flying across the screen, which he only animated out of necessity. For him, the idea behind the movie was to make it a gateway or entry point into the genre because he doesn't think action movies like this have been done that much in animation. He didn't want to talk down the audience too much either. Okay, there's the message, let's not be preachy. Pierre took some inspiration for the movie directly from himself. He felt that he was going through a bit of his own midlife crisis and funneled that into the wolf. You know, you need somebody that's slightly hard to understand because then it makes you listen more. <laughs> Number eight, with a script this interesting, it would be hard to say no to a role. Everybody involved in casting put lists together of who they thought would be good in the roles, and the director was happy that every actor chosen was on his list. It was actually uh, rather easy, I gotta say. 
The first actor approached was Sam Rockwell. The usual suspect would be George Clooney, but the director wanted more than that. Pierre's been a fan of Sam since his first movie. Sam saw the presentation with the trailer, artwork, film, music. He said, yeah, that sounds like heaps of fun. I'll do it. Everybody was given a copy of the books to read, which sold them on the project. Mark Marin took on the role of Snake because he was surprised somebody wanted him to do the role at all. That, and he felt he could relate to the character. Go bad or go home. Number nine. We wonder if anybody went method for their role. Aquafina enjoyed her time as a spider. I wanted to channel someone who was really good at what they did and, and had total control over that. It seems like she and Alex Borstein had something in common. I like in general playing no-nonsense characters that, especially women, who know what they want. Lily and Zossi enjoyed the voice acting process because they are incredibly expressive people and film can usually force you to stay very subtle. So being behind the mic was freeing. Less free was Craig Robinson, who wasn't allowed to improvise all that much. But he did get to play with the way he spoke each line and worked with the director a lot to refine the different voices of the different characters he played. Confused? We're talking about characterception, a character within a character. His favorite character voice was the pregnant woman, but he also found himself struggling with his French accent. Keep cool, baby. Birthdays should be chill. Number 10. Some actors got special privileges. The director, Pierre, really wanted to get people together to record for this project. Thanks to a certain pandemic, they had to record separately, for the most part, as the actors were all over the country as well. Mark Marin and Sam Rockwell were the only actors who really got to work together in the studio for a truly meaningful amount of time. They spent a lot of time refining their character dynamic because it was at the heart of the story and important to get right. But out of all the people in the world, I hate you guys the least. Number 11. Fast cars are what make action scenes good, right? You don't do an, an action scene without knowing where you, the goal of your character. If you do an action scene for the sake of an action scene, the audience will get bored very quickly. The dance scene has a lot of layers for this reason. And the director's question was how to subvert the expectations of an action scene so that it becomes a unique version of that action itself. And the stylization was all very important. The lighting, the color, the style of the motion. Number 12. First reads aren't always fantastic. The cast's first time reading together was over Zoom, and even still, the acting was on point. Excuse me, is this the lady truth? The cast were busting a gut over how funny the script was. And you know what makes a good table read? A great table read? It's the narrator. No, not Mr. Wolf. The guy reading the stage directions, or rather, the business of the screenplay. <laughs> Motion sensing lasers can and track wolf and snakes every movement. The Bad Guys is one wild ride. We can't help but love the direction that animated features have been taking these past few years. It feels like studios are really starting to take more risks now that animation has caught up with imagination. If you could play any one of the bad guys, which would you choose? Let us know in the comments, and thanks for hanging out with us here at The Things.